All right, I have just after seven. Is everybody ready? Okay. Uh, then we will start this evening's proceedings. Uh, welcome to the Town of Queensbury uh, Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, June 16, 2020. Uh, this is our first meeting for the month of June and our sixth meeting thus far uh, for 2020. And to add to the complexity, it's our second meeting being held uh, under the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, we have one administrative item for approval of minutes for the February 18th and February 25th uh, planning board minutes. And I think we have a resolution. You want to give them Oh yes, thank you for that reminder. Um, if you have an electronic device, if you would either turn it off or turn the ringer off so as not to disturb our proceedings this evening. Also note behind us the illuminated exit signs in case of an emergency, uh, that is your way out. Uh, the public hearing will have a call-in availability to folks that are observing the proceedings, not in person, but on the town's YouTube channel. Uh, that phone number when we get to public hearings is uh, area code 518-761-8225 and I will repeat that number at the, uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, applicants and representatives coming up to speak at the microphone, uh, I believe there's some sanitizing materials there in between. Uh, when you're done, if you would just uh, wipe off the microphone for the next available person. I see that everyone is wearing a mask, so uh, we will proceed with Approval of minutes uh, for January 21st, January 28th, February 18th, and February 25th. Okay, motion to approve Town of Queensbury Planning Board minutes of January 21st, January 28th, February 18th, and February 25th, 2020. So moved. All right. uh, is there any, uh, any discussion, any corrections to any of the minutes? All right, uh, can we have the vote please, Marie? Mr. Deeb? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Shaker? Yes, on the first three, abstain on February 25th. Mr. Hunzinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Faber? Yes. Next, we move to our regular agenda. Uh, the first section being recommendations to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the first item is Site Plan 11-2020 for Ronald Miller. Uh, Laura? Okay, so this applicant proposes to remove a portion of an existing deck, 282 square feet, and then to reconstruct a 282 square foot deck with a 63 square foot addition and a 50 foot stair and landing area. And the project includes repair to the boathouse foundation and new plantings at the shoreline. Relief is sought for the setbacks and permeability. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Tom Jarrett. I guess that's more important now that we can't tell who's speaking. Right. Um, I'm representing uh, the Millers, and Ron Miller is with me in the audience tonight, and he will endeavor to correct me if I misspeak about anything. Uh, this should be a fairly straightforward application for you. Uh, we are trying to replace an existing deck on the north side of the house and extend it slightly the intent was laterally uh, parallel to the lake, not closer to the lake, as you will see in the, in the overhead. Uh, unfortunately, there's a technicality. The shoreline gets closer when you get to the north corner of that new deck extension. So we're actually eight inches closer to the lake than we were before, even though the intent was to keep it the same. Um, we, we need uh, variances for modification of a pre-existing non-conforming structure, that deck setback, uh, permeability, which theoretically I thought we were aggravating. Uh, Ron corrected me tonight that we're actually not. The patio underneath the deck, uh, you can see right there, that right there I thought was being extended, that little section of patio, 26 square feet. He tells me that was built 10 years ago under the prior approval. So we really technically don't need that that increase in permeability or that variance, but it's in there, it's listed, so uh, you, can, you can review that as well. And then there's a repair of the boathouse, which is technically a structure at a zero setback. So we've listed that as well. Um, you'll see photographs or, a, or an isometric drawing of the proposed deck in your package, which I hope 
and clarifies what he's trying to do right there. There's the isometric um, drawing of the, the proposed deck. And there are some photographs of the existing conditions. So it should be fairly straightforward unless the application was confusing, and I'll certainly open it up to questions. Okay, questions, comments from members of the planning board? Uh, I have one. There's, there's a comment in the staff notes. Uh, additional retaining walls and, and a patio were to, were to be constructed closer to the shoreline. The applicant has removed those items from the current plan. They were not constructed uh, years ago when under that approval, and they're not being constructed now. They're okay. not part of the application. Uh, note under CICRA, this is type 2. There's no public hearing on this application because it is a recommendation. Anyone have any comment, discussion? I, I just thought the changes were pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. I don't have any concerns. Okay. So does anyone have any uh, concerns to bring forward to the ZBA? I'm not hearing any. Okay. Uh, then I guess we're ready for that for that motion. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. um, motion to make a recommendation on behalf of the planning board to the zoning board of appeals for area variance in number seven dash two thousand and twenty. Ronald Miller. The planning board, based on limited review, has not identified any significant adverse impacts that cannot be mitigated with the current project proposal. Second. Okay, we have a motion, a uh, referral rather to the ZBA and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Hansinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Thank you much. Hopefully, I'll see you next week. Okay. The next item also under planning board recommendations is Kevin and Annie Deneen, site plan 12-2020. Laura? This applicant proposes to construct a 135 square foot entry mudroom and reconfiguration of the kitchen entry and relocate the deck stair as an existing single family home. The project was seen uh, previously for something similar that they have now modified that uh, entry to include just 135 square feet versus the original proposal. Again, relief is sought for setbacks and permeability for this project. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. For your records, Ethan Hall, I'm a principal with Rosinski Hall Architecture, here tonight representing Kevin and Annie Deneen. Uh, this project was in front of this board back in 2016. Um, it received approval. Uh, at that point, there was uh, some modifications to the garage and the mudroom that we're doing now. Um, they undertook the garage portion of it, but did not undertake the mudroom portion. Um, they made some modifications to it, so we're back to get this reapproved. Um, it's a slightly smaller than what we had done before, uh, so the setbacks are basically the same. Um, and a little more permeability than what we had last time. The current, the, the current approval, the current site is 65.4, and with this, it'll be 64.8. So. That is very slight. <laughs> very slight. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Questions, comments from members of the board? We did look at this before. I know it was quite a while ago. Uh, it's 2016 is when we had the original approval. And, and they did do the portion of it, which was the garage expansion, but they just didn't get around to doing this, and their approval ran out. So we're... Mm -hmm. Basically, getting back to that now. Uh, this is a recommendation to the ZBA, so there is no public hearing. It's uh, under CICRA. It is considered a Type Two. Any comments or questions for the applicant? I know. Any concerns, uh, 
regarding our referral. I see a few members still looking at the plan, so we'll give you a second. Yeah, it's actually slightly better than what yeah. was approved first time. Right. Yeah, I want to appreciate you uh, coming in with better numbers there. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> we're, we're tired to get rid of that four square feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So any, uh, any concerns from board members on this for our recommendation? Okay. Now I guess we're ready to hear that motion as well. Mm -hmm. Motion to make a recommendation on behalf of the Planning Board to the Zoning Board of Appeals for area variance number 10-2020, Kevin and Annie Deneen. The planning board, based on limited review, has not identified any significant adverse impacts that cannot be mitigated with current project proposed. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Mary, could you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Tom Zinger? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. D? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. Great. All right, you're off to the ZBA. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on our agenda, also under planning board recommendations, is uh, Adam Leonardo, site plan 14 2020. Laura? So this applicant proposes to remove a 606 square foot home with an 8 82 square foot deck to construct an, of a footprint of a home of 888 square feet with a 288 square foot deck. The existing floor area is 606 square feet. The new floor area is to be 2,173. Relief is sought for setbacks floor area and it indicates height, but that has been resolved. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good right, evening. Again. Mystery guest again, Tom Jarrett, uh, Jarrett Engineers. I'm representing the Leonardos. Um, I may be arriving shortly. Oh, geez, I didn't see it. Sorry. Um, this is a project where uh, the Leonardos have bought a, an old camp. I'll call it distressed. I've used the term tired maybe too many times. This is a distressed camp. They are planning to upgrade the site and upgrade the house. Um, the house would be somewhat larger than the existing. The existing is very tiny and a slightly larger deck. Now they're moving the new house closer to the lake, which needs a variance because they want to accommodate parking with stormwater and a new wastewater system. Um, the setback would be 40, just over 44 feet in lieu of the 50 foot required. But in the context of the neighborhood, I think it's um, very reasonable to request this. The house to the, to the north is actually closer to the lake and the one to the south is around abandoned and um, really doesn't come into play at all. We also need setback variances, two sideline setback variances. Um, the floor area ratio variance, uh, the Leonardo worked diligently to try to get the size of the house down and they got it very close to compliant but they really need the space they've got planned in the structure right now so they need to ask for this variance of one percent i believe it is and lastly permeability which was uh very difficult impossible to achieve virtually on this site it's so small very very small property um, there are engineering comments outstanding and i'm not sure exactly where they stand but most of those are perfunctory there are some issues with setbacks, and I don't know if the board wants to get into those tonight or not. We can do it next week if you so desire, or tonight if you wish. 
Um, could you tell us about the shoreline planting? Is that compliant with the new regulations? Uh, I believe it is. That was our intent, and we will okay. make sure it is if it's if it's not. I, Laura, did you uh, have to take a look at that at all? I did take a look at it, and again, it's discretionary with the board. If the board feels that's a sufficient amount of plantings, then that they can move forward with that. So, and I was comfortable with what was presented. Okay. But our intent was to make it compliant, and Adam is willing to cooperate with the board and with staff to, to uh, have something reasonable. And that berm will limit uh, runoff to the lake, and then it'll be planted to be an aesthetic landscape uh, berm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, comments, questions from members of the planning board? Um, I noticed the uh, floor plan has three bedrooms and a sleeping loft. <clears throat> yes. Was the pre flow system, is that being designed as four bedrooms? I believe it is. I'll call on Adam because uh, he, he worked with another engineer on design of that wastewater system. Okay. Yes, that was, uh, that was designed for four bedrooms. Yep. Could you just state your name for the record? Adam please? Leonardo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Tom, you said there were setback issues? Uh, yes. Uh, Chazen, other than the variance? Pardon? Other than the variance? Yeah, uh, technical sub setbacks, uh, stormwater and wastewater. Uh -huh. um, Chazen has identified the setback issues that, that the small lots on Glen Lake, Sunnyside, and, and Lake George have with meeting all the setbacks for stormwater and wastewater. Uh, we've done our best, and we've actually moved the stormwater system to get a little bit better compliance, but we're still out of compliance. I did talk to Sean directly by phone, and he understands in the context of lots like this, you can't really achieve all those setbacks. You do the best you can. Right now, there's no stormwater management. Right. Wastewater is an old, antiquated dry well, um, and we're vastly improving the situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping he puts that in the context of the letter back to us and to the board. Okay. Thank you. I do have a question for you. The deck that's going to be on the uh, lake, lake facing uh, yeah. part of the house here. Yep. Is there going to be anything under that deck? Are you planning on pouring concrete, uh, permeable pavers? What do you? I, I was planning on putting pavers. Could you, Adam, if you don't mind, if you would speak yeah. into the microphone. We just want to make sure our minutes are clear. Thank you. Yeah. I was planning on putting pavers down. I, I believe that's factored into the. I believe it is. I recall it was. Yeah. Okay. Into the permeability, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Other questions, comments? Uh, there is no public hearing on this, as it's a referral to the ZBA uh, under CRA. It is uh, type two. Uh, does anyone have any? Uh, Issues they want to put forward in a recommendation to the ZBA that have not been discussed by the applicant. You do have the engineering comments that will come back to us for site plan. I'm hoping to come back in the next week with, uh, you know, <laughs> everything's uh, resolved. But yeah, I, I was glad to see the the height variance went away because I had questions on that. Yeah, we had to work on that a little bit. The structure was a little bit of out of, out of compli compliance originally, and we worked on it. Good. All right, I guess we're ready for our recommendation. Then. Motion to make a recommendation on behalf of the Planning Board to the Zoning Board of Appeals for Area Variance Number 11-2020, Adam Leonardo. Planning Board, based on limited review, has not identified any significant adverse impacts that cannot be mitigated with the current project proposal. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? I guess we're ready for the vote, Maria. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Teague? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. Again, thank you, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Okay. Uh, <coughs> bells on, Tom. Okay. With bells, bells on. Bells on, absolutely. <laughs> I won't be here, though. <laughs> uh, next, we move to the new business section of our agenda, and the first item under new business is Frank and Aaron Steinbach. 
Site plan 15-2020, Laura. So this applicant proposes to construct a 154 square foot addition to the rear portion of the home where a portion of the deck is to be removed. Site work includes updating the concrete steps at the front of the home with new steps and landscaping, uh, primarily as a, a function of stormwater maintenance as well for that site. And uh, it also includes a facade alteration to the point where it's, it's just strictly on the front of the building. It's not a structural um, change within the home itself. And there, um, it's, uh, this is hard surfacing within 50 feet of the shoreline, which is across the street from the project site. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, Andy Allison with AJ Architecture, representing uh, Frank and Aaron Steinbach. Um, Frank is with us, and uh, he'll tell me when I get out of line. Uh, <laughs> so as Laura said, this is actually a pretty small project. Um, they're on assembly point. Um, the road separates them from the lake. Uh, their house is quite close to the road, as you can tell, and uh, the major thing that they're doing out front is this uh, old set of stairs, which aren't really code compliant, and they're also failing concrete stairs. Um, they want rip, <clears> to <throat> rip those out, and in place of those, put in a uh, planter bed. So we're actually going to remove the concrete that's there and replace that with uh, permeable surfaces, and then wrap around that planter bed with a new set of stone stairs that will be code compliant and upgradable and uh, maintainable. Uh, so that's the major impact there. We don't really extend any too much closer to the lake with the new bluestone stairs that'll be there from what the old ones did. We're just sort of shifting them uh, to the west and putting a planter bed in. Uh, so that's the major component there. Um, the other piece on the on the lake side is, is this elevation right here. They just want to dress that up a little bit. So we're building sort of a false uh, gable on the one side, and then we're going to reside that to match uh, the existing siding on the house. Um, or maybe we could go to the. Well, I can talk about it here. This is fine. Uh, this one. Yeah, right, right there. That would be good. So okay. this is that new false gable that we're going to build on. It just slightly bumps out from the existing gable, um, just the width of a stud, and then we'll put on a new roof, which will help address the scale of that and really just pretty up the front front part of the house. So that's. That's the whole scope of work out there. In the back, they are going to be removing, uh, here we can see a photo of it down here, a, uh, a, de a, a paver patio that's in the back. And in lieu of where a portion of that is, we're gonna put a small addition that would house like a little mud area, a laundry room, because they don't have one on the first floor. Uh, and Laura, maybe we can go to the, the either the floor plan or the site plan. Uh, that's fine right there. Um, this, is, this is what's being removed. Um, sorry, over here, this, this large deck. And then we're going to replace that with this addition and then a wooden, a wooden deck uh, to the side of it that does not exceed the extents of the existing deck. So in the calculations, you can see that we're subtracting out 200 square feet of, of uh, decking, but we're replacing that with 154 square feet of building. So we actually have, you know, pretty even on permeability when this is all said and done. Um, there's no... There's no impact to the rear yard setbacks with that addition, so we're not really touching any of the setbacks either. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments from members of the planning board? Uh, yes. I, I, I don't know why, but I got stuck on this plan. I just went, kept going over and over it and, and tried to figure out why. He did a really nice job. I, I, I like it. Um, what you're doing is taking um, your home and, and really taking the home and, and I just, everything I liked about it, and but then the interior renovations just caught my eye. That is such great thinking. Thank you. Um, I just really, uh, it, it's really a, a small, minimal thing that uh, that you're doing uh, to uh, to really uh, bring some more enjoyment out of the house, so um, I like it. So. Well, I, I just draw it; they pay for it, so. Oh, did they? <laughs> nice job, really. Yeah. Uh, I do have a question. The the uh, on the staff comments, we've got uh, grading and uh, drainage plan, sediment and erosion control. Plan shows a new pathway for the front entrance. Sediment and erosion control may be needed to minimize the impacts of the lake. You're, during construction, you're saying? 
<laughs> yeah, so this, <clears throat> they will have, you know, uh, filter fabric and, and socks okay. all along that front side. I have a question for you. So on the north side, since the, the roof line's all pitched that way, and it's a very small, small lot, are you doing anything for drainage to keep that runoff on the property? Uh, it doesn't look like there's existing guttering, anything of that nature? Most of the runoff right now actually does get caught. Um, it doesn't cross the road in sheet flow. It gets caught at the edge of the driveway and kind of runs down to the west and hits the, the uh, yard area. So we, it's, it's odd you bring that up because the Steinbucks originally uh, wanted to do something to address uh, in the front. They wanted to actually berm, take that grass berm and pull it back closer to the house mm -hmm. to flatten that area out in there um, so that they had a little bit of flat area out there. But that, we advised them that would be too much work within the shoreline and probably would upset the apple cart. So. Uh, we pulled away from that, but the, the natural drainage right now does come down and kind of runs uh, to the west and, and into this yard area over here right now. But we're not putting in any, any new structures because there's really no way to, to I know, take I that. know it's a very tight property, and yeah. anytime we have an opportunity to improve it, yeah. um, you know, that's they, one thing I would just encourage. If there's any additional um, adjustments that you can make to try to keep even more water on there, because it is so close to the lake, it's, it's a small problem. Yeah. There's not a lot that you can do, but you can yeah. come up with anything. I don't recall, um, Frank, maybe you can answer this. Do you have gutters on the front of the house now? I mean, everything, everything gets caught on the deck and kind of runs back in, but there is a drain isn't there in front of your garage door. I know you guys like to hear uh, names. I'm Frank Steinbeck. Uh, at, at present, no, there is no gutters on the house, uh, but yes, it's something that we've discussed. Uh, additionally, uh, down the road, what we would like to do is um, do some foundation work. The foundation is compromised, and uh, I've discussed it with my wife, but as with everything, you know, it's money. So, uh, it, but eventually we, we plan on having some work done on the foundation. When that's done, we'll probably put some type of uh, better drainage around the perimeter of the house. To well, right now the gutters might help help your foundation a little too i mean yes yeah get that water if you can get it away and get it controlled out a little bit more yeah yeah that'll uh, we will have gutters on it before the end of the season but i i don't understand the money issue you know yeah <laughs> thank you very much actually before you you leave the podium um on the plan also you're showing an outdoor shower on the back is that new to the property no that was there it's no longer there it's okay. been removed thank you yeah, you're welcome there is a public comment on this uh, application. Is there anyone in the audience that wanted to address the planning board on this application? Not seeing any hands. Um, the public is also invited to call in to the town phone line for the planning board uh, for if you have public comment. Uh, that number to call in is area code 518-761-8225. Uh, the phone is here before us and we'll, we'll give a couple of minutes for folks to call in if they wish. Frank, you did say you're going to put gutters on before the end of the season? Yes. Okay, so we won't have a condition. All right. We have not received any phone calls on this application. So, are there any last uh, questions for the applicant before we move to a motion? 
All right, hearing none, I guess we're ready to entertain a motion for this application. Motion to approve site plan 15-2020. Frank and Aaron Steinbach. Uh, per the draft provided by staff, conditions on the following. One, waivers requested are granted. Two, adherence to the items outlined in the follow-up letter sent with this resolution, including items A through G. One second. We have an approval motion made and seconded. Is there any final discussion? Uh, Maria, can we have the vote, please? Mr. Hansinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Deeb? Yes. Ms. Voigt? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. You're all set. Thank you. You're going to need these uh, plans and that to hand in, you want them? Sure. I mean, I was going to say, some money is put it toward the gutters. Yeah. <laughs> Got two more here if you want them. Got Andy. two more over here. Yeah. Andy, we got two over here. I'm not sure if you need them all. Well, you got to hand in what? How many copies? Four? It's Ten? Thanks. Four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> The next item on our agenda, <clears throat> also under new business, is Michael and Gail Dawson, Site Plan 20-20, 20-2020. 20 uh, Laura? Okay. So this project occurs in the Cary Industrial Park. The applicant proposes a new 7,100 square foot building with a warehouse and shop and office space. Uh, and to include site work is to include lighting, landscaping, and stormwater. I note there was um, under staff notes there's a comment about signage, and the applicant is addressing that. And uh, there was no other items that I identified. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, for the record, John Lapper with Tom Hutchins. Um, so, by way of introduction, Mike and Gail Dawson own General Roofing. Um, they live on Assembly Point, and they've been renting on Big Boom Road for years from Doug Maybe. Um, they bought this lot, one of the last available lots in the Cary Industrial Park, so that they could design a facility just for their needs. Um, they're a commercial roofing company. Um, they do big school district buildings and state buildings that, that size. And um, just so they could own it themselves, design it themselves, and not be renting. So a nice opportunity for them nearby where they were, but again, one of the last lots available. Um, and Tom's done the site plan, so I'll let him answer questions. Good evening, board. Tom Hutchins. Um, yeah, Laura summarized this this quite well in her staff comments. I thought I just add a couple of things. Uh, the majority of their business is done offsite. Uh, I was told today 99% of their deliveries are delivered direct to a job site. They have seven to eight office employees, and usually one to two employees in a very small fabrication shop where they make. Uh, things like edge metal strips and some specialized uh, roofing related generally sheet metal uh, sheet metal products um, but but the bulk of the bulk of the deliveries and materials and equipment get delivered direct to a job site and don't come here they have almost no customer contact at their office um, with regard to the sign that Laura brought up we had shown a standing sign uh, out near the road there will, there will be no standing sign. There will be one sign uh, compliant with their name and logo that'll be building mounted. And uh, with that, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very flat site. Uh, all deep well drained sands. We have public water, we have public sewer. Um, all the storm water is contained on site. There's, there's there is no off-site runoff. Um, buildings generally slope. There's stormwater controls around the entire perimeter, and the building is built up a little bit, and all runs away. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over for questions. Questions, comments from members of the board? Can you just talk about the lighting? The mask, is, that, is that number of lighting fixtures? Yeah, we have, and, and there was a little bit of confusion in our plan. 
Um, there are, we've shown uh, one single standing, I'm sorry, two single 20 foot bolt legs on the front uh, between the, if you flip up to the lighting plan, Laura, good. One more. We've got one, two single pole lights in the front of the building and one double. Um, and there's no more freestanding lights. We had more initially, and then meeting with the owners, they said we don't need those back there. So the, the yeah. remainder of the building is, is uh, uh, building mounted, and yet the schedule didn't get updated from those others got pulled off. That's question. Thank you. So there's no lights on the building? No, there's lights on the building. Oh, okay. There's, there's, there's no pole lights beyond the front parking area or toward the rear. I think it's a nice plan that you put forth, especially with the neighborhood that's in the northwest corner. The impact is there's no impact. Yeah. Nice job. We do have a public hearing on this application. Is there anyone uh, in the audience that wanted to address the planning board tonight on this application? Not seeing anyone. Uh, I'll uh, remind folks again that uh, may be viewing us on the uh, town YouTube channel that there's an opportunity now to place a call to the planning board at area code 518-761-8225 if you wish to comment uh, on the mail Michael and Gail Dawson application site plan 20-2020 and we'll give folks a couple of minutes to call if they wish so is the uh, is the rear of the property just for future expansion do potentially they, do, they, do they anticipate that um not at the present time yeah. it's 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 been considered sure um and and when they get the right fit and the right mm -hmm. use then then the, the, yeah they, they may consider that yeah. <clears throat> it's a pretty straightforward project especially in an industrial park like this last lot that i'm sorry last lot in the park um we got well, more coming up at the end of the meeting Right. <laughs> That's across the street. There was a, I, I drove through the other day, and there were it looked like a couple other vacant lots, but but it was the last available lot, as I understand. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing what sewer will do for an industrial yeah. park. Huh? <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah. That, uh, that, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there's a tap right there for all the, for every parcel. And yeah. Laura, this is listed as secret unlisted? Yes. Commercial project and it's greater than 4,000 square feet. I'm sorry, what was that? Greater than 4,000 square feet, so it falls as an unlisted project. You got a one piece, Tom? No. Okay. I know how you like to pick it. <laughs> so we're doing a secret review? Yes. So I, I did not see a. A voice. There wasn't a state. Oh, there is one. Okay. Yeah, I missed it. Sorry okay. about that. The secretary's all over. Yeah. <laughs> huh. oh, all right. I'm not, uh, we haven't received any phone calls, so we'll close the public hearing. Uh, this is a unlisted action under CECRA, so we have a CECRA review to conduct. Does anyone have any environmental impact concerns regarding this uh, application? Nope. All right. Then I guess we're ready for a CECRA resolution. Motion to grant a negative declaration for site plan 20 2020. Michael and Gail Dawson, uh, as per the resolution prepared by staff, part two of the short EAF has been reviewed and completed by the planning board. We have a secret negative resolution. Do we have a second? A second. Any discussion on secret? Maria, can we have the vote, please? Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Deeb? Yes. Ms. Voigt? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. Trevor? Yes. All right, are we ready to move forward on the uh, plan itself? Okay. Uh, I guess we have a motion for that. Yes, we do. I just got to find it. I know I got it.
Okay. Motion to approve site plan 20-2020, Michael and Gail Dawson, according to the draft resolution prepared by staff with the following. One, waivers requested are granted. Two, adherence to the items outlined in the follow-up letter sent with this resolution, including items A through K. I'll second the motion. We have an approval motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, Maria, I guess we're ready for the... Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Deeb? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hensinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. You're all set. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Do you need these stuff? You want these? Oh, you never take them. Forget it. The next item on our agenda is uh, Clearbrook LLC subdivi subdivision preliminary stage 7-2020. Laura? Okay, so the applicant proposes to complete the Clearbrook subdivision with a two lot subdivision of the remaining lot. This is proposed to be a 78.6 acre lot and a 5.02 acre lot. At the moment it's described as two residential lots. Okay. Thank you, good evening, welcome back. Good evening, thank you. Um, you've seen this before, we were here for sketch uh, January, I believe. Um, we, we, at that time we were working with, with the uh, water district to deal with a somewhat complicated uh, water district extension and a district boundary that, that ran through the central portion of this project. Uh, we submitted this in March um under the the hope i guess that that water district extension would be resolved um it is not yet resolved that's the the our our uh request to extend the water district is still with the town board and the water department um however we have we have uh consulted with the water department on the small lot of this two lot subdivision um, which he has indicated, and I've got an email from him, I assume you have it, that uh, the district extension is not necessary for construction on what we're calling lot 13. And uh, without that resolved, uh, lot 14, we're, we're still kind of up in the air. Um, so I think what, what the owners would like to do is, I don't see them here, they were supposed to be here. But, um, I think what we would like to do is uh, proceed with the lot 13 and we can take development of lot 14 off the table for this time. If that makes sense to the board. So you're still looking for the subdivision, uh, but you're not going to do anything with 14 at this point? At this time. Okay. Laura, do you have any comment on that? So this is, we um, sort of discussed this as well with the applicant and uh, there's other items potentially occurring with that remaining lot and so in turn this would be similar to what you did with this original subdivision where you left one is an undeveloped lot at this time um, so any new use of that lot would potentially come in for review if if adequately um, meeting those requirements to for review and there are still some discussions ongoing of of alternative uh, uses for that final large lot, which is a very, very unique lot in, in, in this zone. Certainly is. Um, Tom, are those, are those discussions far enough along where they could be set as conditions? That, so I'm, I'm going to jump in. So I wouldn't necessarily call them conditions in case those they fall through, then the entire subdivision falls through. So in turn, right, so in turn, it, um, it's a gamble. and they're not up to this board. So if, so if you were looking at the dedication of something um, and you, the planning board says, we want the town board to take this land and they decide not to, then the whole subdivision falls apart. So it's really not, you know, if the town board wishes to uh, take this land, that's a separate action. Um, up to them. You can't dictate what the town board does. Right. Of course. <laughs> so it's not based on the well. It's basically based if 
they want to get the land over to Queensbury? Is that what I'm hearing? Potentially, and it's not a give. It's it's. Um... Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it, I just thought it. One was going to be hooked up to the town water. One was going to be at a well. I thought that. Oh, was so the well. So that it's part of the issue. Um, but. But I mean, if, if it goes either or. I mean, that wouldn't hold it up. I mean, if you, you, if you can't make it to the district, what's wrong with a well? Why can't you have it? That's up to the water department, yeah. and I don't think that's the direction that he was leading to. Oh, ah, <laughs> all right. It's just so confusing. I mean, yeah, we're, it's we're, we're, not we're, there. It's not there. Put a well in, you know? <laughs> well, we'll be better off tabling this, the whole thing. That's what I was wondering. Because I think that it's getting pretty complicated, and it's... Well, the process would still be this. It's still a two-lot subdivision, so that right. doesn't go. That the process doesn't go away. Yeah, it's just the decision, a line on a map, really. Yeah. Just, yeah. So what that opportunity is to do with that remaining lot is will be, you know, discussed in the future. That's a separate issue. So it is a separate issue, and more or less what the board could be looking at is here's two lots, one remaining lot to be residential and the um, larger lot to be undeveloped at this time, similar to what you did. Right. And, and the applicant is interested in, in the lot 13, the five acre lot, that there is interest, there is interest in that property. And that's a, that's a fairly, that's a very straightforward yeah. um, site. It's high and dry, it's sand, it's, it's I've it's seen a lot of easy. for sale signs on the road and I, I actually pulled in and, and drove back in and, and looked at some, I mean, they're, they're really, They've done a nice job opening that up and, and placing it. It's peaceful back there. So. Yeah, you might recall that the 12 lot subdivision, there were two shared drives. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have roughed those in. I mean, they're not constructed by any means, but they have roughed them in so so people can access and And uh, they found it difficult to generate much interest for somebody in one lot when the driveway is shared drive. So that, that they've roughed them in. and. Uh, uh, that helps with that. Um, but at this point, preliminary phase, uh, we'd be willing to take the development of lot 14 off the table, come back with a final that doesn't show that, and and keep moving forward the process with lot 13. Uh, Laura, with regard to Seeker, since we're just dealing with the subdivision aspect of it, we should be able to go forward. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. We do have a, a public comment period on this application. Is there anyone in the audience that wanted to address the, uh, the, the planning board? Yes, sir. I see someone with their hand raised. Uh, if you'd like to. Tom, can you just wipe that down? Yep. There's... One moment. Sure. Good evening. Um, my name is Kevin Matuzak. I live at 420 Big Boom Road. Um, the lot 13 that they're referring to would be in a flood area. I see it every year. Even at the bottom of the road where I live, it always floods. Now, in that place that they want to build lot 13, that's where Finch and Prine used that as a logging facility when they clear cut the property for their logs. And they had problems during the springtime because all the water gathers there and it actually goes into the creek. They filled it in with the brush and the logs when they logged it. So it's going to be hard to put a foundation there if they decided to. Even where I live at 420 and I'm at the top of the hill, my basement floods. So I don't know how you're going to build a house down that low. That whole field during the springtime or you get a hurricane, I've seen water come right across that road. So I don't know how you could allow somebody to build a house down there. Now I'm going on to lot 14, okay? The water line goes across that bridge and that bridge was built for that water line. It wasn't designed for anybody to travel across it or for heavy trucks or anything like that. Um, and it was designed especially for the turtles. Um, I remember the plannings of this. There's special tubing that goes underneath that bridge that's for the, for the turtles to get through from one side to the other. 
Many of us actually visited that site and yeah. that bridge, so we're familiar yeah, with Yeah, I mean, it's not designed for traffic. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't designed for that. Uh, for quick bypass, yeah, that was it. But originally in the plans that went with South Glens Falls and the town of Queensbury, that bridge was specifically designed for the turtles so they could pass underneath that. So any, any construction vehicles or heavy concrete trucks that go across there, who's to say it's not gonna damage the tunnels, you know, or the water line? They build a house out there, how are they gonna get, how are they gonna get off that island with that one access? There's no other access out there, on or off. Well, just so that you're aware of what we're looking at tonight is the subdivision of the land, not the specific sure. design of a, of, a, of a home or any of those site plan issues. We're looking at just basically dividing the property line. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm bringing these points up because a lot of it has to deal, anything below my house is flood area. I mean, Joe DeSantis, he owns the billboards. I caretake the property for him all the way out to the town park. I, the only time I can do it is in the summer, like right now where it's dry. If it rains, there's gonna be water right on top and all the way across there. And it's the same thing over in that section. I'm just putting this out there so people understand when this property, they wanna develop a house. It's not suitable. Yeah, well, thank you for your insight. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience that wanted to address the planning board on this application? We do have, uh, as with the other projects, we do have the phone-in uh, option for uh, the folks that are viewing the town YouTube channel. If you wish to call in and comment on the Clear, Bro Clear Brook LLC subdivision preliminary stage 7-2020, you may do so at area code 518-761. 8225 and we'll uh, wait a minute or two for anyone potentially watching live who wishes to call under the public hearing. Did we check to make sure the ringer was on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. You can call Brad, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I turned my phone off. You want me to call? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Do you have any comments about his, his comments? I mean, we do have test pit information. From on, on, on lot 13, um, lot 13 where, where we're showing it is, is on the high ground. There is a portion of a fair portion of lot 13 that is down the bank. It's not the area we're showing. Uh, it's not the building area. We understand that. Um, where we're showing the, the uh, in fact, the, the road there is the, is the, that was Finch Pines Access Road. Uh, we call it the loop road because it goes all the way around the parcel. And we're north of that. We're on the high ground. Um, there is, there, there's, there is groundwater, particularly seasonally, uh, on, on many of these parcels, four to five, six feet, shallower as you go further out. And that's, that's got to be a consideration uh, on, on many of them. But, but uh, where we're showing the house site, uh, um, we're aware of it, and, and it's high and dry and well-drained. Yeah, you have two. You have two test pits. Right, right there. On the, yes. On, on lot thirteen. We have not received any uh, phone calls from the public, so we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing on this application. Uh, this is an unlisted action under secret, so we do have a secret resolution to consider. Discussion on secret. Anyone have any environmental concerns? At this stage, we're basically looking at a line on the map. We're not getting into the details quite yet. Uh, I think we have a secret resolution. Motion to grant negative declaration for subdivision preliminary stage 7-2020 Clearbrook LLC as per the resolution prepared by staff. 
Part two of the long EAF has been reviewed and completed by the planning board. Any questions on the resolution? Or I guess we need a second first, right? Yes. Another question, please, Steve. I'll second. Okay. Did so we have a motion that's been made and seconded. Yes. Did we need to exclude lot 14 and the seeker? No, not at this point. No, we're just looking at the subdivision. Any other questions or comments on the seeker resolution? Maria, can we have the vote, please? Mr. Steve? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunzinger? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. All right, next we consider the preliminary stage of the subdivision, understanding uh, the updated information from the applicant's representative that there are still some outstanding issues regarding the specifics of what may what development may take place, but they still wish to go ahead with the subdivision of the property. So any final questions, comments on the subdivision aspect of it only? Okay, I think we have a resolution on that. Motion to approve subdivision preliminary stage 7-2020, Clearbrook LLC. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Do we need to specify so, that yeah. one of the lots is the lot 14? <laughs> yes. Not residential at this time. Correct. Yes. Correct? Yes, you do. Yeah. I was, I was waiting for discussion to ask the same question. Yeah. It was discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're putting a condition on the preliminary stage? Is that the suggestion? Yeah, the, it, it would be language. Um, it's not similar to what we did with that previous lot. Um, at this time, it's a, a lot not to be developed. Okay. Yeah, I believe the wording was something to the extent of lot 14 would not be developed at this time. Okay, so that's a condition of the preliminary stage then? And let me redo this. Well, you can just speak in a minute. Yeah. I'm going to amend the resolution to, uh, with the approval uh, with the condition that lot 14 will not be developed at this time. I'll we'll second the amended motion. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Maria, can we have the vote, please? Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Deed? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. All right. Thank you. Now, the left of the rest of it now. Touch them all. I'm going to blame Jarrett. <laughs> he stars on the outside instead of the inside. You're going to blame Jarrett? Okay. He's not here to defend him. <laughs> the next item on our agenda, uh, also under new business, is uh, Werner Grayling, subdivision preliminary stage 3 2020, and subdivision final stage 4 2020. Laura? Right. So this applicant proposes a three lot subdivision. Lot 1, 1.75 acres, has an existing home to remain when the accessory uh, I indicated non-compliant structure. Lot 2 and 3 to be sold as vacant. And they're not, are they, I apologize, it's not a shared driveway at this time, or it is a shared driveway. No. Separate driveways. Separate driveways. <laughs> apologize. Thank you, Laura. Good evening. Good evening. Nick Ketter, for the record. Yeah, so um, Werner Grayling is a property owner, uh, neighborhood residential, 4.2 acres, um, looking to maximize the value of his land and subdivide uh, the property. Um, so proposing a three lot subdivision. Initially, we were gonna go for a four lot subdivision um, and try to, to, to have that non-compliant accessory structure in the back, um, have a shared driveway, but ultimately we put that together just as one lot. So one lot that with the existing house an existing septic, two new proposed lots that fall within the proposed, uh, you know, set, that fall within the um, code setbacks and um, all, of, all of those, uh, all of those things. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments from members of the board? 
Well, Nick, I, I want to thank you for talking him uh, out of the fourth and going with three. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would have been. We would have had to apply for variances, and it would have been a mess. So. One of the questions I had is um, that there's a topo uh, map where you show removal of most of the trees. That uh, most they're actually you can't really tell on the on the, uh, on the aerial shot, but uh, looking at the other map, it looks like they're mostly on lot one. So I'm just wondering why you're proposing to eliminate all those trees. Yeah, no, and, and um, that was, I guess, partially a mistake. The trees aren't aren't going to be totally removed. Um, it really was just in, it, it, it really was uh, just to indicate that there could be some removal for where that house would be be constructed, um, but really going to try to disturb as, as um, I guess what I was trying to show with that was even if all of those trees were removed, it still would, would be less than the percentage, um, you know, that, that uh, could be disturbed. Um, but, but really that's not the, that's not what they're ultimately going to be going to be doing. Want to try to preserve, uh, you know, the nature as best as possible. Okay. Yeah. When you look at the other, at the other map that you've provided and it has the red, yellow and, and green, Borders. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of the trees are on lot one. Yeah. So I just didn't understand why why they were showing them. <clears throat> that and that that additional topo again. It, it, we had initially started as like a four lot, so it, it potentially could have been um, due to that as well. Uh, then we once we switched it to three lot, then it actually kind of we adjusted the drawing and adjusted the lot lines, um, and made the made the other two lots a little bit bigger. Other questions? Are there, are there wetlands on the property? Uh, no. None? None. We do have a public hearing on this application. Are there folks in the audience that wanted to address the planning board on this project? Not seeing any. Um, we will open it up to uh, folks that may be observing this on the town YouTube channel, and we'll invite the public to call in public comment at area code 518-761-8225. This is for Werner Grayling, subdivision preliminary stage 3-2020 and subdivision final stage 4-2020. We'll give folks a couple minutes to call in. Uh, this is also uh, under CICRA as an unlisted application, so we do have a, a CICRA resolution to deal with this evening. Does anyone have any environmental impact concerns that would impact? You need to make sure that those trees can stay then. Yes, sir. That's, that's a concern that even though it shows the site plan. So potentially you might, the board may consider adding that as a requirement to update the clearing information as part of the final. Yeah, I, I'd be more comfortable with that. Okay. We can condition that as, uh, you know, one of the conditions. Uh, final stage? Uh, preliminary stage, I would say, right, Laura? It, 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 as long as it follows through. As long as it's in there, yeah, okay. All right, I haven't received any phone calls, so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this application. Uh, discussion about the tree cutting. Is there any other concerns regarding CICRA? No other written comments? There are no written comments. Good point. I forgot to ask about that, didn't I? Yeah, I figured Laura would chime in, but... <laughs> Glad you reminded me. All right. Well, if there's no concerns regarding uh, CICRA, we can go ahead and process that uh, resolution. Motion to grant negative declaration for subdivision preliminary stage 3-2020 Warner Grayling as per the resolution prepared by staff. Part two of the long EAF has been reviewed and completed by the planning board. I'll second it. 
Okay, we have a seeker motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on seeker? Uh, hearing none, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. Next, we have a resolution for preliminary stage. Uh, there was discussion regarding the tree cutting. The applicant had indicated that was not going to occur, so the clearing limits need to be adjusted. Uh, and we want to reflect on the uh, potential approval that the tree cutting uh, not to occur or to occur in a manner that we want to be, if we want to be specific about any tree cutting, we can do that. I would just indicate that the tree clearing is to be revised. Is to be, I'm sorry? Is to be revised. Is to be revised, okay. <laughs> Any further discussion on preliminary stage? All right, I guess we're ready to entertain a motion for preliminary. Motion to approve subdivision preliminary stage 3 2020 Warner Grayling. Condition upon an updated clearing plan for the, on the site plan. We have a motion. We have a second. Second it. Any discussion on the motion? Now, can I add an additional one? Is that the sketch plan? You you can you have waived the sketch plan, and I don't know if you want to include it in the preliminary. That it's a note, just so that it's clear. Okay. You want? But well, we have it. On, we, we have waivers on on the. Uh, Final. Oh, that's fine. Then use it. You can use it yeah. there. Thank you. All right. All right. Next, we can consider the uh, final stage. Actually, you didn't do a vote. Yeah, we didn't take the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it hurt. Getting a little ahead of myself tonight. Must be the mask. Mr. McGowan. Yes. Dixon. Yes. Mr. Dean. Yes. Ms. White. Yes. Mr. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Hunsinger. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. All right, so next we can move to uh, final stage subdivision. Anyone have any, uh, before we move to that, does anyone have any questions, uh, follow-up questions for the applicant? We're going we're gonna to waive the sketch uh, also. Yes, yeah. please. Yep. Add that. Okay, add that. I guess we're ready for a resolution. The motion to approve subdivision final stage 4-2020. Warner Grayling, uh, one, the requirements of State Environmental Quality Review Act have been considered, and the Planning Board has adopted a secret negative declaration. Two, waiver requests are granted, including stormwater management, grading, landscaping, and lighting plans, as well as sketch plans. Uh, adherence to the items outlined in the follow-up letter, including items four through 10. One second. Okay, we have a motion for final stage made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right, can you call the vote for us, please? Do we need to see anything about the clearing plan? Do you want to include, you may include it as, as part of the as a uh, final? As a final, yep. Okay. I mean, we mentioned it in preliminary. Yeah. All right. Uh, amend the uh, rep final resolution, including items four through 10. And also, number 11, um, uh, clearing plan to be clearing updated. Clearing plan to be updated uh, to show uh, clearing tree plans. Trees. Sure. Yep. Yeah, and I apologize, it wasn't, it wasn't clear, sorry. Okay. All right, we have an amended motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Maria, can you call the vote for us, please? Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. You're all set. Thank you very much. Hey, Nick, do you, do you want these? Uh, uh, yeah, you're going to need them. I'm going to need them. It's going to go down. It's all big time now, but <laughs> Appreciate it. Here, we'll give you all of them.
<clears throat> Next on our agenda, also under new business, we have Native Development Association, LLC. Subdivision Preliminary Stage 5-2020 and Subdivision Final Stage 6-2020. Laura? Okay. So this applicant proposes a five-lot subdivision with road construction from the existing Native Road from Cary Road. So again, it's off of the Cary Industrial Park. Lot one is to be approximately 11.32 acres. Lot two is 2.01 acres. Lot three is 8.24. Lot four is 6.94. Lot five is 3.75 acres. And the right of way is 1.11 acres. The project includes stormwater management, grading, and erosion control. Um, the, road, the right of way road is greater than 1,000 feet, and this is considered a planning board discussion. And in addition, the uh, part of this development includes the existing camera native textile building, and that is to remain as is at this time. Okay, thank you. Welcome back. Good evening, everyone. For the record, John Lapper. Um, so this was the original native textiles building that went vacant for 10 years while they were trying to sell it at the back of the Cary Industrial Park. Funny that we were just talking about this. So um, native development bought it. Um, the idea of creating some more industrial lots right now with COVID and just in general, there aren't a lot of industrial lots or industrial warehouse buildings available in the community. So um, when they bought it, the building was empty, 100,000 square feet. They've now fully leased it, which is a good sign. And they've got people talking about these lots. So um, we've been working with Laura. Well, you know, the board wasn't in business um, to get to this point, um, sort of refine the plan. Um, uh, Luigi Pileschi from ABD is here to discuss the engineering. We do have a, a Chazen letter, which um, the issue here is that all of the lots will be subject to site plan review, and we're trying to guess what's the most likely, what people are going to want. But when we know what that is, they'll be coming in on an individual basis. Um, the ABD's job was to show that all the stormwater could be handled, even if big buildings are done. But right now, it's designed for the road um, yeah, and for what's anticipated on, on the lots. But again, they'll be subject to in individual site plans. So the goal is to get it subdivided so they have something to market and you know, hopefully get back soon with some site plans to build some buildings. Um, one of the owners is Tim Barber, who's here, who owns JAG Construction, who builds metal buildings all over the Capital District. So um, he's hoping that he'll get to build some buildings here soon as well. So um, that's the general introduction, and I'll we'll go through the site plan next. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Good evening, Luigi Pileschi with ABD Engineers, um, here tonight for 24 Native, as John had mentioned. Uh, the overall parcel is 33.4 plus or minus acres. It's zoned in the uh, CLI, Commercial Light Industrial District. It currently has a 117,000 square foot existing warehouse building that is fully occupied right now. Um, it's occupied with flex space, so multiple tenants are in there. Um, projects located at the end of an existing road called Native Road. It's off of the Cary uh, Industrial Park. Um, it's bordered on the north uh, by some vacant land, uh, on the east by the Cary Industrial Park. Um, on the south is Town of Queensbury, uh, recreational areas. And over to the uh, west is more recreational area owned by the town as well as a church and some single-family residential homes. Uh, we're proposing a five-lot subdivision. The uh, acreage varies from two acres to 11 acres. Uh, we're proposing to extend uh, Native Road with a cul-de-sac. Uh, the extension um, is approximately uh, 600 feet of extension, however, it's just over a thousand feet from the intersection of uh, Cary Road. Uh, it's about 1,200 in total uh, from the intersection of Cary Road to the end of the cul-de-sac. Each of these lots would have frontage on the cul-de-sac or the extension of the road. Um, we would, would propose that the uh, roadway would be dedicated to the town. Uh, the utilities would be extended. There's existing public utilities for both water and sewer at the end of uh, the dead end road here on uh, Native Road. Um, it's a force main for the sewer main. It's a two inch, I believe. 
Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Chris Harrington, the town uh, sewer and water uh, superintendent, and we've been working back and forth with uh, a few details as to how to make the connection and make the extension for both water and sewer. Uh, there will be uh, stormwater design. Uh, there, we, we have designed the stormwater, I should say, uh, what they call a master swip. As John had mentioned, um, you know, we don't know what the specific tenant would be for any of these lots, uh, but what we're doing is we're doing our best guess to uh, get the size of buildings that are typical in this area, uh, the needs that are out there and the demands. So what we have, have designed right now is a, uh, a stormwater management practice that is in conformance with New York State DEC stormwater regulations. Uh, we're taking advantage of the soils out there being sandy um, and infiltration for our stormwater practice, which is a DEC recommendation. Um, so the, the roadway will have catch basins and storm piping that will be conveyed to uh, our on-site stormwater practice. And the way I have this master SWIP design right now is I'm taking into consideration all the impervious area that you see on our proposed site plan and going into one practice. Uh, that's in the middle of the site. There is a, a natural um, ravine that runs through the, 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 the site. So it, it makes it perfect for us to take our impervious surfaces and collect the water in that area and then discharge it just south of here, um, which then is you know immediately discharging into the river. Um, the Comments we received from Chazen, I uh, had a chance to go through every item and we can certainly address every item. They're uh, you know, technical in nature. We're, we're, um, we're used to seeing those technical comments. And the one thing that um, you know, I'll certainly have further discussion with Chazen about is the classification of this dam. Um, even though we are proposing this driveway to get to lot, or um, it would require fill. However, I've got a 60 inch culvert pipe underneath that driveway. And the way the stormwater is designed right now is, is we're designing, you know, not only what the DEC requires, but what the town requirement is, is a 50 year volume. And with that maximum volume within this uh, infiltration basin is it's only gonna peak about three and a half feet higher than the bottom of that basin. So a lot of times when you, can, when you think dam, dam classifications is when you're 10 feet, 15 feet of water storing behind this dam, but we're only proposing three and a half feet of water, maximum water that could potentially reach that point. And then I've got a 60 inch culvert pipe that will convey the entire stormwater event downstream. So there, you know, I'll certainly have further discussion with Chazen on that. I don't see why, uh, you know, we can't resolve any of the comments that they've addressed in their letter. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly address that and uh, provide any further calculations that they may need, um, you know, and discussion on that. So that's the stormwater end. And then, like I said, the utilities, I had a conversation with Chris Harrington and um, just a couple more details that are needed for the extension of water and sewer, which we can certainly address. Um, but again, uh, the applicant is looking, uh, you know, to, to, for this board to provide, you know, the five lot subdivision so that they can build the extension of this road and market the five lots to, you know, to the tenants that are in need right now, especially during these hard times where office warehousing, I shouldn't say office, it's really warehousing is what's, uh, is what's needed, um, in this near future. So, uh. You know, anything we can do uh, to answer any questions tonight, um, you know, we're here to, to answer your questions. So. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments from members of the planning board? I just want to say, Tim, um, when you came in there buying a, the native textile building and with a plan, and I just want to say congratulations for filling it up and, and, uh, and getting that. I, I, this is another project that I looked over. I, I think that... Uh, is what we needed for Queensbury, and that sewer has really made a, uh, a, a, a great improvement uh, for there because the longest time it just seemed not to want to take off, and now it's filling up. So, um, 
I, I like the project, and, and like you said, it, it's something that uh, we're going to need, we'll need in the future. So. Great. As you go forward for lots um, three and lot four. Excuse me, sir, if you want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I, I didn't realize it was you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was somebody. Yeah. I couldn't see somebody. <laughs> I couldn't see your mask moving. My apologies. <laughs> Lots three and lots four, as we uh, proceed, would you entertain a 50-foot setback on the western side since there's residential over there? Right now it's showing a 30-foot setback. Yeah, so we, right, the setback is 30 feet. We are aware of the 50-foot buffer that's required on a residential. Uh, right now we're proposing a solid fencing along the back there. Um, we had positioned the building along that side because we thought maybe the building would be better than having uh, tractor trailer or car parking right there on their backyard. So the, the building actually provides as a bus buffer as well. Um, but we are proposing a uh, fence and, you know, without really knowing what the specific tenant is and what the real shape of that building footprint may be, it's hard to say. And we want to just keep it flexible right now. Uh, we'll certainly be back in for, uh, you know, for site plan review um, when we're ready for that particular lot. So. But yeah, we are aware of that buffer and anything we can do to provide, you know, you know a fence or, you know, we'll, we'll certainly look into that. Thank you. Laura, I didn't get Chase and comments. Were they available? As far, as, far as I know, they were available. Um, it may have been the time when Sonny may have received, you know, may have not sent them out. I apologize. You, I mean, I can post those um, now if you want to see them or share the, the one in the file. Do you, I guess, do you want to go through some of the comments that they- Yeah, so I, I kind of highlighted like five of the most important that I feel was important. Uh, I think one of them I touched on was the master swip. Uh, the other one was the, the, the dam peak elevation. Um, again, only three and a half feet of what we're peaking on a hundred year storm. Um, the other thing that they were looking for was adding additional erosion control measures on our plans. Um, so, you know, as far as phasing, I think I talked a little bit about the phasing where, um, you know, our intent is to, to build the, the extension of the road, get the public utilities extended, um, and, and get that uh, infiltration basin in, you know, for the drainage of the roadway. And then we would come in at, on a lot by lot basis, you know, for each individual lot. Um, so, you know, in regards to, you know, like the erosion and sediment control and phasing, that they just wanted a little more detail on our, on our plan you know, for topsoil stockpile area, silt fencing locations, things like that, that, you know, we can certainly add that detail to the plan. And you're comfortable that you can satisfy all of those comments? Correct, yes, yep. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, another item, um, you know, the, you know the, I think, you know, so when we prepared the SWIP, in the SWIP, we, you know, we stated that this does cover the whole drainage area of what you see here, but then later on, um, and, you know, I was gonna ask them tonight, but, later on they, they talk about um you know providing more details on a lot by lot basis so like that was in this letter and you know we will certainly be back on a lot by lot basis to provide the detail that they're looking for on that lot by lot basis so um so, I yeah, guess, so, yeah. so, so i'll just i'll add that so in if you're considering a condition you would say site plan review for each of those lots mm -hmm. So up to that, in, in your presentation, it sounds like stormwater will be handled off-site. So right now, I have it. I have it handled as one practice for everything you see right now. Right. Uh, depending on what changes are made on a lot by lot basis, I may need to increase that storage. And if I don't have it in this area that's already proposed, uh -huh. then we'll do. We can do on-site stormwater mig mitigation on each individual lot as needed. Okay. So yeah, because of the sandy soils, you know, we, we can provide underground infiltration basins. We can do galleries, things like that under the pavement um, to I, provide I any. I would just say that stormwater would be discharged offsite into the river. That's correct. So everything is going to be collected in that center area uh -huh. and be controlled by outlet control structures because the DEC manual requires that we, you know, we we have to infiltrate what they call. The, the water quality volume, mm -hmm. which is your first flush, you get all the treatment down in that area, and then you then you need to design the one, the ten, and the hundred year storm events. And there's an outlet control structure that releases that little bit amount depending on what the storm event does. So, mm -hmm. 
that's all been prepared in a SWIP and a stormwater management report that has been provided. Can you give me the number of comments that you have? I'm sorry? The number of comments that you have. The date? No, the number. The number? The number? Sure. Have. Let's see here. Yeah, so it's hard, it's hard to say because there's A, Bs, and Zs or whatever on some of them, but the number at the end is 33. You know, and again, a lot of the, uh, like towards the end, the comments are related to uh, like the notice of intent form. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you know, that gets reviewed. And you know, some of those comments are uh, just, you know, checking the box correctly. And that usually gets, you know, the, the NOI doesn't get done until, you know, after approvals and prior to submission to DEC. So we would obtain that permit prior to construction. I mean, of course the, uh The threshold for us is if in the process of answering Chase's comment letters, it changes the design of the project, he has to come back. So there is sort of that fail safe for the right. board. Because I mean, I don't know how many people have read the letter, but. Plus site plan. Plus site plan. Yeah. So. So I think all we're asking for tonight is, is like the subdivision. Right, so right. you know the subdivision lines, the, you know, won't change because of the stormwater. The um, you know the the extension of the roadway and those utilities for the extension of the roadway, you know, we're we're showing that we have plenty of uh, storage capacity for just you know the the first intent that we're looking for. Um, I think the the more detail into the stormwater review is going to become on a lot by lot basis, and. I think by having this master SWIP, you know, you, you kind of start with, with the overall concept, and then as we go lot by lot, you kind of take that master SWIP and we can revise it and then see how much is left as you, as you get to that last de developable lot. So, so, you know, so, can we, so, so can we talk about the, the lot lines? Um, that, sure. I mean, one, one of the comments that I had is on that building too, which is, um, the one in the middle there? Yeah, it's just, just it's two acres, and they just you, you show a twenty thousand square foot building. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, I was just curious, you know, where you, why you drew the lines where you did? Why yeah. did you draw that lot so much smaller than the others? Is it so you could provide, you know, maximum choices for customers? Maximum yeah, so that that that's exactly right. Um, we're we're trying to provide a mix of size buildings, uh -huh. right? So our building sizes are varying from. From the addition that's forty thousand to a standalone building that's twenty thousand, but then we have a sixty and and a hundred thousand square foot building. So we're trying to provide some flexibility for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. um, those building sizes, you know, could go up, could go down depending on the user. Yeah. Um, but that's what we're trying to provide. And also, you know, as far as how the lines are created, is basically to meet the um, the, the zoning district, right? The the minimum lot frontage, the minimum lot area and the green space behind it, right? So every lot here is, is in conformance to that frontage lot area and green space. How, how, how many lot line adjustments would you anticipate? <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of tenants, yeah. Right, exactly, right. yeah. This seems like a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yep. It's kind of an interesting exercise because, you know, it's like, you know, we're going to approve something, and we're, we're kind of all acknowledging the fact that it's probably going to change. Yeah. Especially if every well, it lot be, comes in for site plan review. It was designed you know. to avoid variances, like Luigi said. Yeah. So I'm sure. You know, is this kind of odd lot? Yep. This way everything conformed. Yeah. Yep. My name is Steve Springer, and I'm one of the one of the uh, one of the owners of this. Also, um, the reason that the excuse lots me, sir, are, if you could just step, step, step up, make sure you get yeah, on the bike, just for our minutes. My name is Steve Springer, and um, one of the reasons that we, we did this also is for financing uh -huh. because it's a bear to finance something like this. So this actually gives us a first shot so we can go in and talk to our existing banks and say, look, we're gonna, we have one bank that has a mortgage on the whole place. So what we have to do to move forward on these is we have to cut out the main piece, which is the existing 117,000. And then we'll work with banks to start to put together deals on the other properties. So what this does is this gives us it's really the first main lot that is the one that's really important to us as far as cutting that out because on the next deal, 
then we have to go back, you know, then we change our financing arrangements that we have on the property. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, when you say, well, where are the lot lines going to be? Well, on that main building, those lot lines will probably be exactly where they are because right. that will be the next piece we're moving forward because we don't have millions of dollars, you know. We have to use banks. So, um, so we'll, that will provide us the, uh, the mechanism where we can go and talk to the bank and say, look, here's that deal that you guys have. And then here's this other deal so that it's clear to the banks where, what they're investing in. Because no one bank is going to pick this deal up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they try to pick up a little piece of it and they work together. Too big. Yeah. Too much risk, you know, for, right. for one guy. Sure. So, yep. and so, and there's been a lot of interest on the part of the banks. So that's really wow. encouraging for us, you know. Sure. And they're smaller banks, you know. It's, uh, it's not like a Chase or something. I mean, it's Green County and Adirondack and, you know, Glens Falls National mm -hmm. and those guys who are interested in picking up a 20% piece of a deal. Mm -hmm. So that's, so we drove, you know, we kind of drove where those lot lines were, or why we actually, you know, why we ended up with that plan, too. And as I said, we don't know what size tenant we'll have, really, at the end of the day. But we didn't want to turn people away because they didn't see the size building they were looking for. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Other questions, Thanks. comments? Excuse me? No, I'm sorry to the. Oh. I'm sorry. Other questions, comments from members of the board? No, I think it's an interesting project. Sure. Yeah, it sure is. It's encouraging to see it happening. Absolutely. We do have a, a public hearing uh, available on this uh, application. Is there anyone in the audience? Uh, I don't see anyone else in the audience that wants to address this. Are there any written comments, Laura? There is one written comment. Okay. Uh, this is addressed to the no, the chair, Stephen Traver. This is from Warren County EDC from Ed Bartholomew. Dear Stephen, as president and CEO of Economic Development Corporation, Warren County EDC, I would like to express full support for JAG Group's proposed development of up to four new light industrial buildings on the 33-acre property they purchased in the Cary Park. Queensbury several years ago, specifically 24 Native Drive. This is an important project for the town and region as there are currently very limited first-class modern industrial space for expanding local companies and potentially incoming firms seeking to establish new operations in the area. As the restart re ramps up and business activity begins to rebuild, it will be even more important to have an adequate level of available existing building inventory so we do not lose opportunities to secure investments and well-paid skilled jobs. EDC believes there may be opportunities to capture potential medical equipment and other manufacturing supply chain reshoring by firms resulting from the current pandemic crisis and other sectors. It is anticipated there will be government requirements coming to, hive, to have higher percentage of suppliers located within the U.S. This new development will give Queensbury and the region an opportunity to compete for these jobs and investment. Since JAG Group acquired the former 1,116 square foot vacant native building in 2017, they have invested significant dollars to make repairs and improvements to the facility and have, as a result, attracted three tenants from the region that needed additional space and have filled the building. EDC greatly appreciates the town's desire to grow commercial and industrial businesses surrounding Ig Exit 18, Corinth Road Corridor, the long range visionary infrastructure investments made by the town over recent years, including expansion of sanitary sewer along Corinth Road to Cary Park and others have served to attract new interest of companies with well-paying year-round jobs. I welcome any questions or comments you may have about our support for the JAG Group. Thank you, Laura. Uh, I'll remind the public that may be uh, observing this discussion on our the town YouTube channel that uh, there's an opportunity now for you to call in to make public comment on this application, Native Development Association, LLC, subdivision preliminary stage 5-2020 and subdivision final stage 6-2020. Uh, the number to call is area code 518-761-8225. Um, let's see, and for the board, this is an unlisted action. So under CEQRA, we may consider a seeker resolution and again this is uh not obviously not yet for the individual uh construction of the lots but rather just for the subdivision itself 
Does anyone have any concerns, uh, comments regarding speaker? Okay, I guess we're ready to entertain a motion for secret. I'm sorry, before you do that, do you want to finish up your public hearing? Yeah, close, close. Oh, yeah, well, thank you, Laura. Uh, we have not received any phone calls, so we'll go ahead and close our public hearing on this application and proceed to entertain the seeker resolution. Motion to grant uh, negative declaration for subdivision preliminary stage 5-2020 Native Development Association, LLC, as per the resolution prepared by staff. Part two of the long EAF has been reviewed and completed by the planning board. I'll second it. Okay, we have a secret declaration made and seconded. Is there any, any comment on the resolution? Maria, can we have the vote, please? Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Deed? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. So next we can uh, proceed to consider the preliminary stage approval for the uh, subdivision. I know that one condition that we discussed was that uh, the individual lots would be subject to site plan review. Uh, is there any other discussion on preliminary? Do you want that in preliminary or final? It would, yeah, that would go on final. Final? Okay. Yeah, how about that final? All right. So then uh, we're looking at preliminary. Okay. Um, motion to approve subdivision preliminary stage 5-2020 Native Development Association, LLC. The requirements of the State Environmental Quality Review Act have been considered and the Planning Board has adopted a secret negative declaration. Okay, we have a preliminary stage uh, resolution to approve. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, Maria, can we have the vote, please? Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Deeb? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Trevor? Yes. So next we move to the uh, consideration of the final stage approval for the subdivision, um, which has a number of conditions. We want to add the condition that the individual lot development is subject to site plan review. Are there any other considerations or conditions? So I have a, um, a suggestion in reference to the buffer. The applicant has proposed the uh, six foot fence instead of the 50 foot buffer. And that should be considered in your, wa in your waiver request if you're granting that buffer. That's one. And then the other one is waiver from sketch. And the third one is in reference to getting input from the town highway and the town water department. Okay, we need to be specific on the input from the highway department, do we not? You need to gather information that the road is going to be compliant with the town's requirements. Okay. So we're approving the six foot fence tonight. That would be a site plan. At the moment it's within your the subdivision application because it's an it the way the subdivision is drawn up. It would be. It will become. It can be a discussion item again. But at this point, it's in within your subdivision. So we're just going to waive the buffer. Is that correct? We're, we'll agree to come back and talk about that at site plan once we know yeah. what, the, what the building's going to look like. Okay. So that'll be. I'm more comfortable with that. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's a note that should be added to the plans and the waivers discussed at the site plan for that lot and I don't know which lot that is. We can add that to the condition as a condition, correct? You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll add the condition that the six foot fence in lieu of a uh, fifty foot buffer will be discussed. Well, when okay. put buff, buff, buffer to be discussed at site time. Right, exactly. Yep. Mr Mr. Chair? Yes. At some point I would ask the question about traffic. I don't know whether it's at this stage or whether it ought to be done on each individual lot, but you take the accumulated traffic from lot one, lot two, lot three, lot four, lot five, bring it out at a single location on the current road. So the earlier two, Cary Road, is a loop road? 
Correct. So there's the, you know, the west and the east side. Is there a signal at either end of carry on? Just a stop sign. Stop sign. Yeah. But there hasn't been a traffic issue. That's a county road, Corinth Road. I'm just looking at it in the future with five new buildings, four new buildings. And I think that right now, because we don't, you know, certainly look at the maximum of what the buildings are going to be, but until we really know, if there's one large building, we'll be dealing with traffic at that point. saying that I will raise that question at some point in terms of the totally traffic fair. impact on Corinth Road. Hopefully we'll have a lot of traffic and we'll have to deal with it. Information for the. Uh, and I guess if yes, the traffic signal is needed, what the space it would be to the one on either side. We, we need to have the highway department confirm that the proposed road is compliant. Right, Laura? Yes. Yep. And that's fine because that's the intention to make it a town road dedicated. <clears throat> As proposed for the uh, subdivision is compliant. We need the highway department. Tim, how many different tenants do you guys have in there? Uh, highway three. Department confirmation awesome. that yeah. of the of the proposed road is compliant. Spaces. That was a big building. Yeah, it worked. Uh, that was your plan. That worked out great. So. All right. <laughs> Did you also include? Uh, Apologize, the water department sign off for water. Still up on the mountain? So the, the applicant needs to go through a dis same with the highway. You're going to need some information from the water and wastewater department. Mm -hmm. And I know they've had discussions, but that should yeah. be part of That's fine. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. Okay. Motion to approve subdivision final stage 6 2020 Native Development Association LLC. One, the requirements of the State Environmental Quality Review Act have been considered, and the Planning Board has adopted a CICRA positive declaration. Two, waiver request of granted. Negative declaration. Negative declaration. I didn't say that. It's just positive. And I highlighted negative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're covered. Board adopted a CEQA negative declaration. Uh, two waiver requests granted, including stormwater management, grading, landscaping, and lighting plans, including sketch um, <clears throat> and I adherence. To I'm going to interrupt you on that. That their waiver has not been granted first. They've supplied stormwater management. I think this is a copy. So you're going to. That part of the so scratch stormwater management. Right. So we're yeah. So we're we're wavering sketch, but we're not wavering stormwater management. Okay, waiver. Uh, let's amend that waiver request granted for grading, landscaping, and lighting plan and sketch. Right. Adherence to items outlined in the follow-up letter, including items three through ten and eleven, site plan review needed for individual lots. Twelve highway department confirmation. Uh, that the proposed road is compliant. 13, buffer to be discussed at site plan review. 14, water department sign off is required. So it's water and wastewater. Water and wastewater. I think we got it all. I'll second that. So we have a final uh, subdivision approval made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Maria, can we have the vote, please? Mr. McGowan? Yes. Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Hunzinger? Yes. Mr. Traver? Yes. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, much. Yeah, you're still on. The Ouija, is that French? Yeah. Ouija, <laughs> you gonna take these? Are these the ones you want to draw? You want these plants? Yeah, I'll take them. Oh, you want to hang on? Yeah. Oh, by all means. You can have mine. Okay. I'll drive back and see. Right, there you go. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Let us know. We encourage you to go back and take a look, though. You know, it's it's good to see the place working again. No, you take it. Oh, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm so happy, guys. I, I, I know it was a, it was a big game at the beginning. Motion to adjourn. You know, yeah, we're, is there anything we're, further before the board tonight? We're just tonight? tickled that, uh, you know, that we've had the, the response to it that we have. And 
we have guys calling us all the time and say, geez, you guys have more space? No, sorry, we don't. But we could build something for you. Yeah, now yeah. we know. That's, That's right. right. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much, you guys. Good Appreciate good it. Good Any further business before the planning board this evening? Uh, if not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned. We'll see everyone on Tuesday.